Uh, good day, everyone. Uh, this is Sharif Ibrahim with Cancel Survey Equipment. Uh, so we'll start our webinar in, in one minute. So we'll give you enough time for everyone to join the, the webinar. Okay, um, good day everyone. Uh, this is Sharif Ibrahim with Cancel Survey Equipment. Uh, I would like to, uh, on behalf of Cancel, to uh, thank everyone for joining us uh, today and have, hope everyone is doing well through this uh, hard time. So uh, this webinar is part of our new series. We just started like uh, three weeks ago and in this series we started to uh, show you the different workflows we have uh, um, and, and the webinar was covering different core topics, starting from survey uh, workflows, uh, laser scanning, point cloud uh, deliverables. So uh, this is going to be the third uh, webinar covering uh, the laser scanning and the point cloud uh, deliverables. So the first one was uh, two weeks ago for feature extraction, and uh, last one last week it was regarding uh, uh, visualizing the point cloud to the images and uh, data sharing and collaboration as well. So uh, today the main focus of the webinar is going to be about uh, utilizing the laser scan data and, and floor flatness uh, analysis. And um, we're going to show you uh, one sample of this workflow, which is using the Ferro laser scanner data to collect, uh, you know, the point cloud in the field and and uh, and the office side. I will go will show you the trim real works uh, with the advanced uh, edition. So um, a bit of background about myself, um, leading the scanning and photogrammetry lead uh, uh, with Cancel. Um, seven years with uh, Cancel, so I'm leading a professional team of dealing with uh, uh, point cloud data collection, uh, uh, processing deliverables, uh, all in addition to the drones and uh, mobile mapping. So feel free to reach out to, to us if you have any question uh, related to either uh, best, uh, you know, workflow deliverables or the stuff. And you have my contact as well. So um, a quick agenda. And before we start here, a bit of like administration. Uh, Everybody is going to be muted during uh, the webinar. Uh, so feel free to type in your question at the bottom right corner at the question panel and we'll keep the last five minutes to um, answer your question. And if uh, we didn't, uh, you know, have the time to answer all the question, uh, please uh, um, email me or, and I will get back to you with, uh, with answers uh, for sure. So we'll start first with uh, overview of uh, cancel and then we'll show you the different um, you know, tools used to inspect, uh, you know, the floor. And then after that, we'll jump into uh, the floor uh, flatness workflow, the one we uh, offer in-house. And then I'm going to pick one of them to show you um, uh, from field to finish, how you can uh, inspect your uh, floor. And then after that, um, I have also a sample of our uh, two-day crash course we, uh, we offer to cover uh, you know, data collection with Ferro scanner and then uh, processing the data and creating deliverables with real works. 
so we'll we'll keep the last part for uh, for the demos. We have live demos almost 22, 23 minutes. Uh, so uh, so uh, and then we'll keep the last five minutes for uh, your questions. So a uh, bit of overview about uh, cancel. Uh, we are over 50 years in in the business, 100% uh, uh, um, uh, owned and um, uh, running by Canadian. Uh, we have more than 600 employees and uh, we have more than 20 uh, branches across the country and based out in, 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 in Vancouver, uh, in Burnaby office. Um, also regarding the, our sister companies, we have a group of companies under the cancel uh, umbrella. Uh, for sure, the cancel covering the survey uh, business, uh, solid cat for Autodesk solutions and consulting service and training. Uh, building point for vertical construction, uh, part of Trimble as well. And then we have images for uh, satellite derived data and geospatial data field ethics. Uh, Vantage for uh, precision agriculture, uh, LIDAR. And then we have also Cobalt for uh, 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 printing supplies and, and wide format. So uh, let's start by discussing first uh, you know a bit of background about why we need to inspect the floor what are the solutions uh, in the market uh, uh, so back in the days um, uh, we used like to visually inspect the floor for flatness and the reason for that we need to make sure the floor is flat before uh, before going to the next step so if you're gonna uh, if you're a general con uh, uh, contractor you need to deliver your uh, floor you need to prove that it's it's flat and this is very important for the next step if you're gonna uh, pass it over to the guys gonna install uh, uh, you know the the panels and uh, partitions all those stuff so uh, this started like back in the days was uh, just like visually check the flatness and then we started to go with uh, different devices like using uh, the laser level um, to make sure it's flat and uh, in the last maybe 10 15 years uh, a new tool came up which is uh, actually like a, a dip stick and actually this tool is um, got like a, a two uh, kilometers here to measure the tilt uh, on both sides of, of the device and it goes through like a, a profile or grid on the floor and based on the data collected uh, there is like a, a software to uh, create a road uh, you know the the, the floor profile uh, and make some statistic to get the the flatness and uh, some curves as well recently we started to see potential of using the laser uh, scanners uh, and the benefit of using the laser scanner here, for example, the Ferro S series we have in house, is uh, you collect the data in less time. You collect uh, more than enough data, um, and uh, the process is going to be done very quickly in the software. Uh, so we don't go through the hassle of uh, the the stick is not calibrated, my laser lever is not calibrated, and this causes uh, a lot of delay and uh, losing money as well. So we have seen like some scenarios related to using the dev stick without uh, calibration and you figure this out after delivering uh, you know the results so usually um, after the data collection we process the data and next step is to create your uh, deliverables so the deliverables ranges from uh, just i have some clients just looking to know uh, how many bags they need to fill in the concrete so we just need one number for the fill uh, uh, volume uh, other clients looking to create like a heat map like the one you see on the bottom right corner where you can see uh, areas of cut and fill so you can easily print this out and take with you in the, in the field you can also create uh, like cross section or profiles from this and if you like to go more professional and you need to create like a, a report according to the ASTM standard um, you need to have a tool that support uh, the FF and uh, FL, which is uh, the floor flatness and floor uh, levelness. And for the FF and FL, you need to do this within maximum of 72 hours of uh, installing, uh, uh, you know, the, the floor. Uh, but if you're going to just do as built or just need a rough volume or to see how much shrinkage or uh, uh, happening to the floor, you can do this at any time during the, the installation. So uh, regarding um, you know the data collection uh, in house we have different ways to uh, collect the data very quickly. So either we used uh, a Ferro S or M series laser scanners or Tremble X7 
uh, scanners or the Trimble SX10 uh, scanning station to collect your uh, data. You can take your data further to another software to, uh, you know, to, to process and create your deliverable. So if you are a CAD user, for example, we have the Ferro as built, which is a plugin um, under AutoCAD. So if you are using Civil 3D, Plant, uh, even uh, uh, Revit or AutoCAD, uh, you can take your data from uh, these devices after doing the pre-processing. And then after that, you can insert it as an RCP file and start to do your analysis. The other solution we have, uh, the one in the middle with uh, the scene software, and this software is, um, uh, you know, the desktop software to process the Faro uh, laser scanner data. So it, it does the, the basic stuff like doing, uh, you know, the registration uh, cleaning. And then after that, if you like to do the analysis, you can take this into a RISM, which is uh, an add-on uh, or like a 3D app that you can add on later to your uh, scene software. Uh, to run uh, the analysis and it creates the FF and FL reports as well. Uh, the other solution we have is using Trimble Realworks. So if you're a Trimble user, I would like to, to, to stick to one software that support all these hardware starting from Faro, uh, Trimble Scanner and Total Station. You can take the data into Realworks, start your registration, georeferencing, and then after that cleaning and um, go through uh, you know, the workflow for creating deliverables. So I was just going to show you two sample scenarios we have here, and then we'll focus on uh, Railworks one. So uh, again, as I mentioned before, if you are uh, like an Autodesk user and you already own uh, AutoCAD, you like to do the analysis there. Uh, you can, uh, so if you collected the data by uh, either the Faro, Trimble, or uh, the Trimble Total Station Scanner, you can uh, process your data either in Trimble Business Center or in Trimble Railworks, and then you export the data as uh, RCP. Uh, which is a recap format, and then insert it into the as built plugin in, in AutoCAD. Um, if you are, uh, if you are, if you already own Scene uh, and you have Ferro Laser Scanner, or if you already uh, have a Recap, you can process the data there, register the scans, and then after that you export the data as RCP and then insert into uh, um, as built. The other scenario, which is more likely, and this is going to be the uh, you know, the focus of the demonstration is using uh, <clears throat> Railworks. So um, Railworks, first of all, is compatible with all these data starting Faro, uh, Trimble X7, and uh, the Trimble SX10 uh, scanner. Uh, and in addition to that, it got registration tools, uh, cleaning. Uh, it got very nice tool, for, uh, tool to automatically extract, uh, you know, the, the, the floor. So you save... Uh, 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 you know how much huge amount of, like just time to uh, uh, do the cleaning uh, and then also if you are just doing the floor analysis just to get the volume or need a heat map you can do it and we have another tool also for uh, you know creating the FF and FL according to uh, the standards so uh, let's start the first uh, demonstration here so I'm going to start with uh, uh, <clears throat> the first one which is just doing a floor inspection so this is a Railworks interface, and uh, this is like the current release, it's 11.2.1. Uh, and uh, um, we have uh, actually got like two different interfaces for the software. So if you are already a current user, this is uh, the old one with, where we have registration, offer, survey, and modeling. Uh, if you see some uh, YouTube videos and you see like a different interface, this means you are in the new interface where we have the registration and uh, the office area modeling already uh, combined into a production uh, mode, module. So uh, the two tools we are gonna sh uh, show you today are uh, the floor inspection and uh, the FF and, and FL uh, analysis, and both are part of the office uh, survey uh, module. So uh, the data set we have here, uh, this is a gray scale of the point cloud, and this is the, the 3D uh, point cloud. Uh, and actually we have seven uh, scans. So uh, the first step here after importing just, just the data, just to go through the registration to make sure uh, uh, you have very good registration, tight enough according to your uh, project specs. So after that, the next step is gonna be running uh, the floor uh, analysis. And um, uh, to do the floor analysis, uh, there are a couple of steps we have to go through. And you still can run, do the segmentation or the fencing. 
uh, <clears throat> if you feel that you need to get rid of some of the data or just to focus on uh, the area of interest. So, uh, and then after that, you I need to go uh, through some parameters like the grid spacing, uh, the reference elevation, uh, and if you like to, um, you know, fill some holes in your data, and if you like also to add some tolerance to uh, uh, the heat map uh, before it creates. So the first step here is going to be the segmentation. So we'll just isolate um, roughly the area of in, in interest. Uh, you still can do this segmentation prior to run, uh, to run the floor inspection um, tool. Uh, and again, um, you can do it within the tool as well, which uh, that's why I like the software. So we don't have to close the tool, run the segmentation, um, and then after that, create another deliverables and then use it after that in the floor inspection. So we might go through a couple of cleaning here by just fencing uh, the area of interest, so like in any fencing tool you keep, either what's inside or outside uh, the tool. So maybe rough cleaning for for now. You remember this building is like under construction, so we still like got some data outside uh, the windows. So it's better maybe to isolate uh, just the area of interest to get rid of these outliers. So once you are happy with uh, the segmentation, the next step is going to be isolating the floor. And this is the main step here. Uh, so in, uh, we have the sampling tool. And within this tool, you can subsample the data. You can extract the ground for outdoor. Uh, you can also create uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, intensity-based uh, sampling or classification. But for now, I'm just going to show you the, the floor uh, extraction for indoor. Um, so very basic, the software is gonna <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> is gonna go through the data, uh, extract the floor, and within a couple of seconds, you're gonna see uh, two uh, colors here. Red represent all of floor uh, points. You can also see the floor, uh, which is like the the grayscale color, and uh, it's good also to do a quick uh, sanity check uh, to see uh, the quality of uh, you know the classification. And the other thing I like here, you can jump also to the station-based view, where you can visualize the data from the perspective center of the scanner, so we don't have any other objects in the foreground. And you can see how the software did a good job to isolate all um, other objects rather than uh, the floor, like if you have any cables, uh, 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 pipes, um, uh, and you can also double check, you know, uh, the footage of the columns. You can jump into another station uh, view to make sure that we don't have any outliers. Nothing is uh, missed, uh, missed here. Uh, once you are happy with uh, with the result and you feel everything is okay, uh, you can jump back to the 3D view and uh, start to isolate uh, uh, the floor from the rest of the, the data. So what we're going to do here, just uh, keep the floor and after that, we're still running uh, or we're still going through the, the steps for running the floor uh, analysis. So in the next step, uh, the user has to define the grid spacing. So since we're going to create a heat map and we're going to analyze the surface, we need to, uh, so we're going to do like a more maybe cleaning here if you feel that you still have unnecessary areas uh, and you don't need to have them in, in your uh, final result or uh, report, you can do another uh, fencing here, and once you are happy, we'll go to the next step, which is uh, uh, the grid spacing. So, um, according to your project uh, specs, uh, so uh, the user has to define a grid uh, uh, for the area of interest. You just go and fence your area of interest, and you have different ways to do that by creating a, a rectangle. Uh, once you are uh, done, you just validate your uh, selection and then you start to enter uh, the grid spacing. So what's going to happen here? Uh, the software is going to count all the points, take the, all the points in, in, inside each grid into account, average them up and uh, compare the elevation, the average elevation with the reference uh, plane. And based on that, the software is going to create the heat map and cut and fill. Um, uh, regarding the reference elevation of the best fit plane, uh, you have different options here. If you have any point in mind, like a, a benchmark, you, either you go and select this point from, uh, you know, the 3D data. Uh, for example, if you have a stairway, uh, uh, you know, uh, elevator entrance uh, or any other benchmark, you can do it. 
if it's hard to see it in the point cloud, you still can jump back into uh, the station view and pick this point. Uh, so you can just uh, get the elevation of this point. And then after that, you um, uh, use it for uh, you know elevation of the reference plane. Um, if the user doesn't have any point in mind, uh, you, the software has a tool to just automatically get the average, uh, uh, the average point and um, the average elevation and use it uh, to, uh, uh, to place uh, the, the reference plane. Uh, the other thing here, if you feel you still have some holes in the data, software can help you to do interpolation and fill in these uh, gaps. Uh, out of tolerance, if you are a general contractor and you still have another Floor contractor and then need to split, you know, the uh, uh, you know the deviation between. So you can maybe set another threshold like three mils, six mils. So you can get the data or the volume of cut or fill uh, that is like more uh, for point more than six mils deviation from uh, the reference plane. Once you are happy, you just create uh, the heat uh, the heat map and this is the final result in uh, for using the floor flatness analysis. And you can see that we have areas. Uh, above the reference uh, uh, plane uh, highlighted in red and blue represent uh, you know the the pixels or uh, the areas or the grids uh, where you have the points or the average points are below uh, the reference um, you can also display the cloud you can display the grid you can display the inspection uh, an inspection map to see the result if you are happy with the result you can go to the next step if you see that maybe you need to identify uh, the grid using different the grid size or change different elevation uh, you can or you know select a, a specific area you still can go through them um, uh, what we can get also from the floor flatness tool here is a kind of a report so we'll have a kind of like a, a package uh, and in, in this package you will have a couple of deliverables uh, starting from uh, you know the the heat map uh, and uh, a report showing you know the text file showing all the cut and fill uh, values uh, so in a couple of seconds we should see uh, uh, this report and it's actually in a rich uh, uh, word document so you can easily add your uh, company logo to it um, you can add any uh, comments add any pictures um, you can add like an edit stamp and this is, uh, you know, the, the Word document, this is automatically going to be created. So uh, first, first, like the header and then the general specs or the parameters you have used, uh, reference elevation, the grid size. And what's important for us here is the volume of cut or fill. So if you just need to count number of bags, you can take uh, the volume of fill. And, and uh, based on that, you can do the math and get how many uh, bags you need to have. And, and more than that, you will have uh, the heat map. Uh, it's a huge file size, might be 50, 60 megabyte. So if you, up to you, it's like to keep it here in the Word document or you can um, uh, save it outside. Uh, and this is similar to the one you'll see in, in, uh, in, the, in the software. Uh, the other stuff we have here in, uh, in the package here is gonna be uh, these deliverables. So we'll have, uh, uh, you know, the deviation map or uh, the heat map. And this one uh, uh, got all the deviations. So you can see here when you zoom in all the way, you'll see the cut and fill for uh, red and blue uh, uh, areas. And again, as I told you, you can easily print this out and take it with you uh, uh, in the field. And we'll see later how we can uh, utilize this to uh, create more uh, deliver deliverables in, in, in the next step. The other deliverables we have is if you like to insert, uh, you know, the uh, cut and fill uh, uh, numbers into any software, you have access to, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, the four corners, the coordinates, and the last deliverable is uh, all, uh, you know, the the cut and fill values. So we'll have uh, like a, the pixel ID and then X Y Z in addition to, uh, you know, the cut and fill value. So let's say we are happy with this result, but you know, uh, I'm not just looking for the volume. I need maybe to co go further and create more deliverables from the heat map. I would like maybe to create, see the profile uh, of my, uh, you know, uh, floor. So this is an inspection map. Now we saved it in, in the, uh, the software or the project uh, database. And you can see here, uh, 
that we have another tool called an inspection uh, map analyzer tool where you can take this uh, heat map and create multiple uh, deliverables from uh, from it um, different ways to uh, to do this so you might get just like a, a, a cut and fill uh, you might need to create a section uh, like a cross section to get the profile uh, if you like also you can do a, a, a mesh uh, you can take this mesh and insert it into an, any other software, or you can create ISO curves or uh, uh, contours. So um, the, what you see here in the background, uh, you see the screen split into different small windows. Uh, so one window is going to show you the 3D view where you have the section. When you zoom in, you will see, um, you know, the, the reference uh, elevation plane, the red one. You'll see uh, the best fit uh, polar line to the point cloud, the grid one. And you in the in the bottom right corner you'll see the 2D uh, profile, and you can easily uh, slide this uh, you know uh, cutting plane through the data either uh, horizontally or uh, or vertically here, um, and then uh, you can zoom in, you can uh, change uh, uh, you know the color bar here is it to report the cut and fill or just to uh, report the default one showing you the whole range <clears throat> of cut and fill through your data. Uh, you can hide it. You can also edit if you if you like to change, uh, you know, the intervals, uh, the colors, uh, the settings, and even if you have uh, your own, uh, you know, uh, 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 color bar or uh, values, you can import them from like an Excel sheet uh, if you like. So let's stick right now to the section and uh, uh, the shifts. So. Um, um, so as you see here, you can maybe create one uh, one section if you like at a specific area, or you can go further by uh, creating multiple uh, multiple ones here. As uh, so you can set just like uh, the slice intervals, like let's say every uh, 50 cents, and you can go through uh, them one by one to check uh, you know the result before you create them, and you can reverse the direction uh, as well if you like to start from uh, the other side of uh, of the building, and then if you are happy you can uh, easily export uh, the result uh, either to DWG or uh, DXF if you're uh, a CAD user, or you can also create uh, these cr cross sections later uh, in, in Tremble database or in the project database, uh, so you can access them uh, later at any time. So um, in the next one, I will show you uh, you know the other tool we have which is ff and fl uh, an inspection tool and this is according to the astm standard so um, i i just like separated the the floor here uh, to save uh, the time and uh, <clears throat> this is the second tool uh, that we can use to inspect uh, the floor similar to the one we've seen with the, the floor um, uh, inspection uh, you need to define uh, you, uh, the area and then after that, start to draw your uh, uh, samples or uh, uh, polylines. So what uh, uh, I like this tool because uh, uh, it uh, it matches, you know, the ASTM standards and it's more user friendly. So if the user, for example, measure like a small area, uh, you know, smaller than uh, what's in the standard, the software is going to show you uh, like the area in red. Once it turns into green, this means it, it, you know, it, it fits the standards. So it's... Uh, 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 very dynamic with you, so you don't have to waste your time after you create uh, the result. You say it doesn't match the standard, so you just need to have a window around, you know, the the area of interest. And once you are uh, happy, uh, you can, uh, you know, validate your area, and then after that, you can go to the next step to define, uh, you know, the the samples. So in the second step, uh, you just start to add uh, the samples where you have uh, the test one by one to just uh, two clicks over uh, the area of interest and the software is going to show you uh, right away uh, the result and uh, according to the area the, the software is, uh, is like smart enough to show you what is the minimum number of samples you need according to the area so you'll see the same here if uh, the sample line is short or it doesn't fit the standards it's gonna uh, uh, turn into red once it's uh, it bat this uh, criteria or the prime the threshold is going to turn into a uh, red so we can easily keep going with creating you know the sample if we create one nearby the first one it's going to be red because the 
minimum separation so uh, should be 1.2 uh, meters according to the standards so the software is going to check this for you as well and um, if you see here on the uh, right corner that we need to have at least 62 uh, samples this is like the minimal uh, uh, requirement according to the area size so once you uh, pass you know this number uh, you can easily create the reports you can easily start to add uh, you know any number of samples uh, you have so I'm just going to go through this uh, very quickly and if you did any mistake that uh, the sample line went through like a, a, a void or a column uh, the software is going to also show you like a warning message this uh, this line doesn't uh, doesn't fit the standards so the user can easily go to either shift it left to the right to uh, just pass this uh, this problem so once you are happy um, uh, with the result you can also double check how many samples you got if you don't like one of them you can select it uh, delete it shift it left or uh, or right <clears throat> and after that once you are happy with the number of samples you have uh, you can easily go and create uh, uh, the report so uh, um, so the idea here uh, the report here will consist of uh, you need also to enter your uh, threshold according to the project specs for the FFL, like the average and uh, the minimal ones we uh, we have here. And once you are done with this, the software is going to create the report automatically for you. Similar to the flatness one, we'll have the header and then we'll have uh, uh, all the parameter uh, or the threshold we, uh, we used, uh, the area, the number of samples, uh, and then the total number of readings and then at the bottom we have also a kind of a screenshot of uh, the sam the area the, the area used to test uh, the floor uh, we can zoom in to see all the samples we can uh, see the number there and also we can go through the overall uh, samples and uh, uh, through each sample you can see the overall for ff and fl and at 90% uh, confidence interval and if it passes or fail so if it passes, you'll have the green uh, color if it fails you have uh, the red color so uh hopefully i covered maybe most of the the stuff within the time i know we passed the time but uh, uh we still have maybe a couple of minutes um you know to answer your questions so um i see one question here yeah, for sure. This webinar is uh, recorded, so uh, feel free to go to our website, cancel.ca. Uh, uh, you can also double check uh, the old webinars we have there, uh, and this webinar should be recorded and available and, and uh, maybe tomorrow and, uh, or by the end of the day today. The other thing, if you like to receive, um, you know, uh, emails from Cancer regarding the upcoming webinars, uh, and also uh, we are offering like a short uh, uh, courses like four hour courses uh, we are going to put them uh, and and uh, today later today or tomorrow so feel free maybe to go to cancel website if and if you are not receiving uh, you know emails from us uh, feel free to go to cancel.ca and register uh, uh, for our newsletter to receive also all the emails regarding upcoming webinars and uh, the courses uh the other questions they have regarding uh, real works uh which uh, flavor uh um, we're using uh, the advanced edition of real works uh, so it got most of these tools that you have seen today uh, for the floor uh, flatness so if you have an outdoor scene for example like a parking lot you still can use the floor uh, you know uh, extraction under assemble tool or you can extract the, the ground so we have, we have another tool within the sampling tool for uh, for that. Uh, RealWorks has the registration tools, uh, so you can register your data. So we have the batch processing, uh, in addition to the uh, normal registration, like the target-based, uh, cloud-based, uh, you know, the registration. Um, the other question I have here, uh, yes, uh, RealWorks is compatible with. Uh, is compatible with uh, you know the Faro uh, uh, data. So once you drag drag and drop the FLS, which is uh, Faro native format data, 
software is going to convert it into uh, uh, you know uh, TZF, which is uh, Tremble native format, and you can uh, easily uh, proceed with, uh, with your process. So uh, I know we have passed the time, so I'm still seeing more questions coming in. So I'm going to stop here at this point, uh, and I would like to thank you for uh, joining us today on behalf on, on uh, cancel and uh, please double check our website for upcoming uh, webinars uh, and uh, feel free to reach out to me if you have any uh, question for sure i'll get back to you if i didn't have time sorry for that to answer your questions so uh, take care and stay tuned